Man was created to live in peace and freedom. It is our inalienable right to govern over life and property, and it has been thus since time immemorial. For generations, man has fought a long and difficult battle to put misery and poverty behind him. Our ancestors fought so that we today, in our part of the world, could enjoy life and the natural environment that we are indeed a part of. But nature is not only harmony. The wolf hunts the reindeer, the lion hunts the antelope and even the little porcupine has its enemies. The porcupine can't run away when it's attacked. It's slow and steady and it does the best it can. It rolls itself into a ball and hey presto, the attacker has lost his chance. The porcupine has always been the model for NATO. When the NATO Pact was established in 1949, it was an answer to an enemy threat. Since the European political and territorial expansion of the Soviet Union constituted a tremendous threat to the Western democracies. However, the days of the Cold War are about to pass and NATO's external enemies have learned to respect the organization's forces. But NATO also has internal enemies. These are people who are trying to destroy the ideals of freedom of the Western world. People who prefer throwing cobblestones and rioting to a ballot at the parliamentary elections. This is Paris in May 1968. The students refuse to follow the orders of the principal of the university. The crisis spreads quickly to major industries and to the factories with their many immigrant workers. But the French government stands firm and manages the crisis. But during the crisis, NATO troops were on standby, ready to go in if things had gone wrong. So NATO must remain on guard against internal enemies. It must always keep its forces trained for combat. This film has been made to tell the public about an exercise that was conducted during the NATO Ministerial Council meeting in Copenhagen in 1973. An exercise intended to show how a small detachment of well-trained and well-organized NATO soldiers could keep the subversive and anarchistic elements of Danish society in check. These soldiers belong to the AMF, the Allied Mobile Forces, whose main force consists of 60,000 men, is made up of troops from six NATO countries. The idea is to show that worship of one's mother country does not count for much in NATO. Here one chooses one's side entirely without regard for nationality. Soon after their arrival, one squad of troops sets course for the cathedral. Here they participate in the Pentecost service, since they wish to express their great respect for old Danish traditions. Traditions that have their foundation in an unbreakable will for peace and freedom. After the service, there's a little surprise in the program. Sightseeing. A quick tour around the most interesting monuments and buildings in Copenhagen. A little history certainly doesn't hurt. They also visit their colleagues at Amalienborg Castle, 
And here the bearskin hats of the Royal Lifeguards attract justified attention. You certainly don't see those every day. The tour rounds off at Langlinje, and that is the high point of the morning. Who is it that everyone wants to take a photograph of? Should we ask Mrs. Campbell from Australia? Or Mr. Smith from England? Or Mr. Johnson from Sweden? No, I think we'll ask one of our soldiers, Frankie from Canada. May we see your picture, Frankie? Ah, yes, the little mermaid. And now the time is 11.58. Location, Kongs Nutorv, in front of the famous Hotel d'Angleterre. We are awaiting the first official meeting between the AMF and the Danish state, so that they can explain in more detail about the background of the exercise to the press, the TV and the civilian population. And there they are, on the dot, exactly 12 o'clock. The Danish Minister of Defence attends in person and inspects the Guard of Honour. The Danish Information Officer, Captain E. Clint Jensen, attached to the AMF unit, describes some of the demonstrations they fear might disturb the meeting of the NATO Ministerial Council. These minorities flock us out to the high-rumble skar, som smadrer folks vinduer brænder produktionsmidlerne og afspærer gader og veje i timer af gangen. For det meste arbejder de i skjult og i forklædning. Vi har konstateret disciplinkrise overalt i deres administration. Vi har konstateret den på skoler og universiteter, og desværre har vi også konstateret den i de danske væbnede styrker. Vi har set danske soldater nægte at spise. Vi har set dem nægte at lade sig klippe. Vi har set dem nægte at være soldater. Vi har fulgt dette med stedsestigende bekymring. Disse elementer udgør i dag den virkelige fare. Disse elementer må slås ned. Hvad er deres mening om NATO-brandkorpsets tilstedeværelse i København? Ja, jeg er glad for, at korpset er, det må jeg sige. Jeg synes, det er et ualmindeligt friskt og godt initiativ. Det er også på tide. Man kan jo dårligt gå på gaden, uden at blive chikaneret af unge, frelste mennesker, som vil stikke en løbesedler i hånden. Det, vi mangler, er respekten for mennesket. Ja, jeg er helt enig med min mand. Går de så også ind for Danmarks medlemskab af NATO? Ja, bestemt. Ja, også jeg. Jeg beundrer Amerika for den storladenhed. For jeg synes, når man tænker på, hvor meget vi får ud af vores medlemskab af NATO, og, og hvor lidt det koster os, så synes jeg, at det er billigt, og, og jeg synes, det er ufint med al den kritik, der er rettet imod NATO og imod Amerika. Det synes jeg også. Hvad mener de så om NATO herens tilstedeværelse? Jo, jeg synes, det er godt. For som kvinde kan jeg lide den tanke, at soldaterne beskytter os. Hvordan mener de? Jo, man hører så meget om al den ufred, der er i verden, al den vold. Ja, de læser vel aviserne. Det er jo sådan, at man knap kan gå alene på gaden. Der er alt for meget ufred i verden. The afternoon is surprisingly quiet. Small groups of soldiers are spread across the city. And in so-called combi actions, that is in close collaboration with the Danish police, They are stationed at places where unrest is expected. Among the places being guarded is where the Danish Minister of Defence has just held a meeting. Suspect spectators and passers-by are body searched. An extra effort is also needed at Kastrup Airport, where the troops need to resort to pre-emptive detention. In other places, posters are exhibited and information folders are handed out throughout the day. The actions are called off at around five o'clock. 
The soldiers have been looking forward to getting back to the Boatman Street barracks. It has been a long day without a break, and no time for lunch. But tonight there will be delicious food. The capable members of the Women's Army Corps will certainly see to that. Here's the sauce. Is it all right? Oh yes, definitely. And the dessert will be pancakes with ice cream. But the day is not over yet. For the entire previous week, the fine members of the Women's Army Corps have been working overtime. The members of the Women's Army Corps want Copenhagen to live up to its reputation as a cheerful and festive city, and they have obtained the permission of the regimental commander to arrange a cabaret for the foreign guests. It is performed that evening in the Grey Drill Hall, which has been decorated especially for the occasion. So now we'll see the start of this impressive cabaret which is inspired by the best traditions of Germany in the 1930s and the USA in the 1970s. We begin with a beautiful representative from Belgium and then Luxembourg, the United States, France and Little Iceland, Denmark, Portugal, Turkey, Greece, the Federal Republic of Germany, Norway, Italy, Great Britain, and Canada, and finally the Netherlands. Well, that's a welcome that really warms the heart. Incidentally, the boys have permission to invite acquaintances and relatives, and that certainly won't make the evening any less festive. More entertaining acts follow. We see here a scene from the evening's finale, where the members of the Women's Army Corps again appear together on the stage. But it cannot go on forever. Tomorrow's another day, and Andre from Luxembourg is very tired. Good morning, gentlemen. Day two commences with the raising of the flag. One for all and all for one.
Today is the first day of the NATO ministerial meeting. The meeting is held at the Bella Center. From the start, work has been divided up. The police are responsible for security at the conference building itself, while the NATO troops take care of security in the streets. But for the ceremonial opening reception at Frederiksberg Town Hall, it was necessary for both forces to cooperate. Here, neither one could take care of the task alone. Discreetly, but alertly, NATO forces patrol the area. Nothing is left to chance. At 12 o'clock precisely, the US Secretary of State arrives, Mr. Melvin Lair. And a moment later, the British Minister of Defense. At the opening reception, he expresses his happiness at being in Copenhagen, a city of peace and democracy. And here, the Danish Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Incidentally, an amusing episode took place this morning. One of the Belgian members of the NATO Parliament recognized an old soldier pal from the colonial days in Congo. Good people come to where good people are. Another group of soldiers has taken position outside the military academy. This is a guard of honor for the high-ranking officers who are visiting the country. Later in the day, the NATO parliament members move on to Fredensborg Castle, where Queen Margareta and her French husband, Prince Henry, receive them. The royal couple are in a sparkling mood, and the many guests admire the Queen's ability to keep the castle gardens so beautiful. But while harmony reigns in the pleasant surroundings of North Zealand, events in central Copenhagen are moving towards chaos. The Portuguese tourist agency have an opening reception, but unfortunately, uninvited outsiders want to involve themselves with the party. Embarrassing episodes develop, and among others, several Negro provocateurs participate. Wow, black. Huh? You have no right, so you are It should be noted that these incidents occurred before the otherwise stable state of Portugal was thrown into hazardous socialist experiments. Day two ends with a surprise. This time it's the boys who have the initiative. If the Women's Army Corps can make a cabaret, then the lads can do it too. Here we hear Corporal Luntz from the Netherlands, who plays Boccherini's Sonata in B-flat. <coughs> Maybe not everyone's equally enthusiastic about Boccherini, but on the other hand, a little classical music can't hurt. The Green Berets. No one laughs at them. Even if they participate on equal footing with the others in the NATO force, everyone knows that when they stand confronted by a Green Beret, they've met a very particular caliber of a man. Just what they say, the great men of the Green Beret. 
And he is certainly not a Green Beret. But this has been quite enough fun and games. Early on the third day there are problems. On Stroil, the cosy Copenhagen shopping street, a gang of youths have begun to perform something they call street theatre. <laughs> And afterwards, a little slap or two. The youths must learn that truants who just want to harass peaceful passers-by can expect nothing less. What is their about the action NATO soldiers have just carried out? I think they were brutal. They had not needed to be so brutal and slow so hard. Ja, soldater brød mig det hele taget ikke om. Hvad så deres indstilling til Danmarks medlemskab af NATO? Tak, det interesserer mig ikke. Jamen, jeg synes, det er helt i orden, de skal have nogle tests, de der unge lømler. Det er det eneste, de respekt for. Ja, jeg har selv fået masser af tests, da jeg var ung, og det har jeg aldrig taget skade af. Det var jo en lovlig anmeldt demonstration. Jeg, jeg giver pokker i den slags love, og det skulle være forbudt at spille teater på gaden. Ej, de skulle have tæsk. Det er det eneste, de trænger til. Ja, jeg synes, det var lidt synd for de handlende. For de handlende? Øh, ja, det skaber en vis uro i gågaden. Og øh, det er jo ikke godt øh, med alt den palade her i turistsæsonen. Det er der, Danmark tjener sine penge. Hvad er så deres holdning til Danmarks medlemskab af NATO? <laughs> Bare det koster penge, så er det med for den værste. At 14.21, there is an alarm from the national radio station. A group of activists, maybe disguised as police officers, are running around in the radio station's corridors. It is to be feared that they will interrupt the broadcasts. Three minutes later, a squad of troops are on the spot. The order sounds, catch the false police officers. The activists hide in toilets and in broom lockers, but no one can help them now. Get them out and don't hang about. And now it's obvious by the sloppiness of their movements that they are not real police officers. They try to make light of the matter by smiling, but that doesn't work, gentlemen. The radio station has a lot of hiding places, but every nook and cranny is searched every office turned upside down and it certainly won't be long before Radio Denmark is cleared of unwanted individuals.
It's all up. 27 people are under arrest. They are taken away under close supervision. During the evening, Radio Denmark broadcasts live from the drill hall. In a moment, we will hear Royal Theatre actor Jens Falk Stefansson tell a military joke. It has been prepared especially for the occasion and is tonight presented to the public for the first time. And now we are on the air. Han spurgte en dag, da de stod op med sjerede, er der nogen, der er gode til at tegne tal, skrive tal, og en 10-20 stykker meldte sig straks i øjnet en lille chance, at de lettere, og han hævde en frem, og kom her hen i aften op, og øh, hvad er de det daglige? Det er ham og altså boghavler. Ja, sagde denne befalingsmand så, vil I tage det bredt og tegne to store runde nuller, Midt på brættet, og så sagde vi nullerne ud og sætte brættet op i knæhøjde mellem de træer derovre, så vi kan få en god latrin. <laughs> And there's nothing wrong with a good joke, even if there can be language problems for some people. But after the intermission, there's an act without too many language problems. Today, the Allied mobile forces face their most difficult mission. Today, it has been announced that there will be a demonstration against NATO. At the same time, telephone bomb threats have been made against several large corporations. They must be protected. The business community must not let itself be scared. Some episodes were, of course, unavoidable. At Kong's Nutorv, a friendly conversation was cut short by screaming hoodlums. One, two, three. Clear the area. But the main task is the surveillance of the demonstration itself. A small group of NATO opponents have gathered at Blogord's Place to march to the Bella Center in order to disturb the ministerial meeting.
Nein, 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 up ahead, anxiety is starting to take hold. Will the demonstration be subject to unfortunate developments? Inside the Bella Center, the guards see to it that all exits are closed. At the last moment, the situation is saved. Yes, it's the AMF coming in from the right. They separate the leaders from the demonstration. There's complete confusion amongst the participants. And that is the end of that. Trying to make a fool of NATO. That's all they know. Perhaps it's better if we leave this propaganda circus of professional provocateurs and their workshire accomplices. Let us instead, for the last time, turn our eyes towards the drill hall at the Boatman Street Barracks, in time to see the finale of the NATO show that is unfolding on the stage. We've got the whole world in our hands. That's what they're singing and how right they are. The Western Defense System surveys the entire planet, 24 hours a day. For instance, from this radar station, somewhere in West Germany, where Wehrmacht officers follow all the movements in Scandinavian airspace, they are on the highest alert at all times and likewise in South Africa. They never relax down there. And from an air base in Taiwan, there's a close watch on the nuclear submarines of foreign powers. It's June the 15th. A new day has begun in Europe. The 6th American fleet has long since steamed out of Piraeus in Greece to guard the Mediterranean Sea. No intruder shall make this ocean of peace unsafe. The highest military vigilance, combined with the latest technological wonders, the price of peace can never be too high. And what happens in Copenhagen on June the 15th? On the fifth day of the NATO deployment, the final breakfast, the last meal ticket, the day of departure. These five days in Copenhagen were just a small exercise, but an important one. We have seen that a small detachment of well-organized soldiers can easily overcome a far larger number of hooligans and anarchists. NATO stands for democracy, and the 60,000 men of the Allied Mobile Forces are one of the guarantees of that very democracy. <laughs> 